Hi everybody, I'm Scott and I'm going to start this video off with an apology to the company that sent me this. It's a solar motion sensing light from Divine LEDs. And uh, they sent it to me about a month and a half ago and I'm just getting around to doing a review now. The reason I have to apologize is because they sent this to me free of charge. Now I told them that the fact that it was free would have no bearing on my review, whether it be good or bad, but I told them I would definitely do a review, and it's only fair that if they send me free stuff, I at least keep my promise as far as that goes, so I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry it took so long. Came in this nice bubble envelope, and wow, it's uh, smaller than it looked in the pictures, I gotta say. Um, it says on here, Vaunt, I think that used to be the brand, now they're called Divine LEDs. Uh, you can go to divineleds.com to find them. Um, again, I'm not endorsing them, at least not yet, because I haven't actually checked this out and seen what's inside. Just as far as what it claims, it says three modes of lighting, quick solar charging, over 12 hours of light per charge, heat and waterproof. Now, my understanding is it has a little PIR sensor in it, so it'll turn on when it detects movement, and it's not one of those that stays on constantly, though it does say it has a function that when it's extremely dark, it will turn on in night light mode, which I think is supposed to be dimmer than the motion sensing mode. And uh, it looks like it's pretty easy mounting. It's got a screw hole on it. I'm wondering if it'll come with, uh, yeah, so it has these little um, standard sort of drywall anchor type things and a little eyelet. I'm not really sure what that's for, but we'll find out. And inside the packaging, I guess I should do it for this camera. Inside the packaging, we have a little instruction booklet type thing. Oh, hi, I'll be your manual for today. I like that. Okay, so there's not too much of the operating instructions uh, as I would expect. Uh, it says unlocking and activation. The internal battery is locked by the factory for safe shipments. Users must use a supplied key pin to click the on off socket. So I'm guessing that's what this little uh, guy here is. Uh, please use the, the supplied expansion pillar hinge and screws to mount the device on a pole, wall, or anywhere outside you seem fit. You seem fit. Solar panel charging, please make sure there's nothing interfering with the device getting enough sunlight to charge, and the light will turn on for 30 seconds if it detects any movement within three meters. So that's pretty cool. Um, so it's just a basic uh, motion sensing light. Warning, keep the device away from fire in order to avoid explosion or leakage. Any severe shock to light is not recommended. No shit, I mean, don't go throwing it on the ground. Uh, no one except professional technicians should attempt to disassemble the light in order to avoid damage. Well. I'll be disassembling this light, so you can call me a professional, even though I don't get paid for this shit. All right, and at long last, here is the light itself. It says Vaunt on it, not Divine LEDs, but again, uh, name change. So it looks like it has four surface mount LEDs under resin, um, because it, it's actually very clear resin. It looks, uh, it looks quite nice, but there's the uh, four distinct LEDs. And of course the PIR sensor and the solar panel on top. So you're supposed to mount this to a wall or to any sort of surface and the sun strikes this, light comes out the bottom and bada bing bada boom. Um, it, like I said, it's smaller than I expected but it feels pretty solid. It, uh, it actually has a feel of quality to it. Uh, it's got this little power switch hole here. So let me stick the little key in there. I guess you can just use a paper clip or whatever you happen to have handy. Ooh, okay. Well, it lights up, comes charged. I always like when it comes charged. And uh, yeah, there it is lit up. Tell ghost stories with this thing. Just from looking at it though, it doesn't seem very waterproof unless there's a gasket because there's this, um, there's a seam around the back and it, it just looks like this back panel is screwed on with these four screws. So unless there's some kind of O-ring or gasket around here, I can't see it being too waterproof. I mean, the solar panel is nicely resined in, but it's recessed around the edges. Like, in other words, there's a lip to the solar panel where it seems like water would easily collect in there. Of course, I mean, it's at an angle, but it seems like water would collect right here. That remains to be seen, though. I am going to mount this outside my house and test it out. And uh, by the time I post this video, I'll have some conclusions to share with you from that. Hopefully, we'll get a good rainstorm in the meantime. So uh, next step is I'm going to take this apart. We'll see what's inside. I'm going to put it back together. Hopefully not screw it up in the process so that if it is watertight, it remains so. Mount it outside and uh, I'll report back with my findings. The back is held on by four screws with heavy threads that are driven into the plastic of the case. 
With the screws out, the back falls right off, and there is indeed some waterproofing in the form of a U-shaped gasket set into a channel surrounding the internal components on the top and sides. A medium-sized flat lithium cell under the cover is held firmly in place by the pressure of the cover against a foam pad. You can see indents on the foam caused by the ridges on the inside of the cover plate. Under the cell is a very small circuit board with extremely fine wiring, especially those going to the LEDs. Here's a close-up in more detail, and it appears that the wires are perhaps insulated with lacquer or some other very thin coating at any rate. The circuit board is fastened with two small screws at diagonally opposite corners. The circuitry is fairly simple, with notable components on the front being the passive infrared sensor, the power button, an 8-pin chip, and a 6-pin chip. There are the usual sorts of support components, resistors, capacitors, and even a Zener diode, and what may be a voltage regulator or transistor labeled X03V15. An internet search didn't turn up anything on it, though. For your reference, the 8-pin chip is labeled 8830BV4L1C, but again, that didn't turn up any info on Google. Just based on how it's wired, I'm going to take a guess that it governs the charging of the lithium cell. You know, setting charge, current, and voltage, and providing overcharge and over-discharge protection. The 6-pin chip may be a voltage regulator involved in the charging. But anyway, I'll leave the really detailed circuit analysis of LED fixtures to Big Clive, who actually knows what he's doing. You can check out the even larger images of the circuit board on my site, s.co.tt, if you want to check things out for yourself. Around the back of the board is some more support componentry, and what is probably the mastermind of the whole operation, an unlabeled 14-pin chip. I'm guessing it's some kind of microcontroller, but beyond that it'll remain a mystery for now. Overall, the board seems fairly well laid out, and it seems to be well manufactured. All of the components are nicely aligned, and the soldering is very neat and orderly for the most part. I mean, there's basically three major things going on here. There is the passive infrared detection, there is the battery charging and discharging, and then there's whatever microcontroller governs how long the light stays on, and uh, whether it goes into nightlight mode and that kind of stuff, and it reads the power switch. Now just by the looks of it, um, there's no screws on the back that are obviously holding on the solar panel or the LED, so I'm guessing that those are either just resin onto the surface of the plastic, or they're just one module that's glued in. Um, I think I won't take those off until after I've tested this out outdoors because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to risk ruining any kind of water tightness it might have. And that being said, uh, for example, there, as, as I suspected, if I put this key thing in where the power switch is, it just passes right through. There's no sort of waterproofing at all there. I mean, it is, that part would be facing at a downward angle when it's attached to a wall. So I assume that not much water would get in there, but if this gets hit by a driving rain, water would almost certainly get in that tiny hole and, uh, and fall right onto the circuit board. I did a quick test of the battery voltage, which is at 3.68 volts. Assuming this is a lithium polymer cell, a full charge should be 4.2 volts, and it'll be empty at around 3 volts. So it's just about at its nominal voltage of 3.7 right now. I also tapped into one of the wires coming from the cell and found that while on full brightness, the fixture drew a current of about 200 milliamps, which means that it's consuming just under 3 quarters of a watt. The quiescent current draw with the solar panel shaded was a measly 0.27 milliamps, or barely any power at all. That's quite excellent, and if nothing else indicates that the circuitry was fairly well designed. However, the solar panel was probably still providing some power. The problem is that when the solar panel provides no current at all, the fixture goes into nightlight mode meaning that the LEDs draw a small amount of power even when there's no motion. The current draw in low power mode is about 5.8 milliamps, which is quite reasonable and would probably allow it to stay illuminated for quite some time. One thing I didn't measure was the capacity of the lithium cell. It's completely unlabeled and offers no clues, and testing it at this time would be pointless because it's not fully charged. But based on its size and weight, I'd take a guess that it's probably somewhere around 750 milliamp hours. One gripe I have about the construction of this thing is that the wires from the lithium cell were stripped very poorly, and therefore only had a couple of strands of wire connecting them to the circuit board. You can see that here. The black wire only has two or three strands tacked onto the solder pad out of the maybe ten or so I counted. It was the same story for the red wire. So when I went to splice the red wire back together, it just broke free from the board. The solution was simple, of course, and I spliced a random piece of blue Cat5 that I had close at hand. I'll admit that I didn't do the best job, but this is a temporary repair until the next time I go to disassemble it. Heat shrink tubing would have been a more secure way to insulate the splice, but a bit of electrical tape is just fine on this very low voltage connection. 
With that done, I put the whole thing back together and moved on to installing it. Installation of the light couldn't be easier. I decided to put it on the back of my garage. I'd been meaning to put a proper hardwired light above the door since we moved in, and this solar light is a quick cure for my laziness. I chose a position kind of haphazardly. You could measure it and level it out, but that's really your business. I just eyeballed the placement of the bottom screw and pushed it in nice and hard to make a mark. They say proudly that no tools are required for installation, but that's obviously a bit of an exaggeration. If you don't have an electric driver of some sort, you can do this by hand with a screwdriver pretty easily, and who doesn't have one of those hanging around? It stays in place with just the bottom screw well enough to get the top screw going, which drives into the hole on, well, the top. All that's left to do is push the power button with the little key thing or a paper clip, and there you go, job done. And before you say it, yeah, that trim could use a cleaning and a fresh coat of paint. It's uh, totally on my list. With the light now installed in an incredibly professional, uh, wait, not professional, a uh, half-assed fashion, I figured I'd show you what happens when it starts getting dark. The low brightness night light function comes on while there's still a decent amount of light, but not early enough to be silly. But now for the real test. The motion sensor! It's really sensitive, and turns on very quickly upon sensing motion. That's a good thing as far as I'm concerned, though I am interested to see how many false activations it gets from animals and random wind-blown stuff. You can see it changes back to night light mode when I'm in the garage, but then comes right back to full brightness as I emerge. So far, so good. Alright, well I mean it's a pretty simple product, I'm hoping that gives you a general idea of how to install it and what it looks like when it's on. The only thing is, it did not ship with a full charge, so what you saw in that video was kind of uh, a low capacity charge. I let it charge up during the day today, um, shooting this uh, the following day, and it looks about the same brightness to my eye as it did the night before. So I think uh, regardless of the charge, it still gives a pretty good brightness, even when it's running low. And now the brightness is kind of hard to show on camera, because it really depends on how sensitive the camera is and how the camera is set up, which is why I noted it in the corner there, especially when I was shooting with the Sony. And if you're into cameras, I'll give you a general idea of what it might look like. And you can kind of see that my garage lights really swamp things out and looked, it looked like God was coming through the back of my garage, right? Well, those lights aren't that bright, obviously. It's a few fluorescent tubes in my garage. So this light is really not a replacement for, let's say, a 100-watt uh, incandescent light bulb. I would say it's definitely enough to see by. I, I, you know, I think it's a good product as far as just finding a path in the darkness. But it's not optimal for, let's say, if you're hosting a backyard party, it wouldn't provide enough lumin illumination to uh, eat by. You certainly couldn't read a book by it. But um, overall, pretty good for what it is. Where I mounted it above the door frame, that's about 7 feet up, and that gave a nice illumination, nice even illumination, of about uh, 10 feet by 10 feet. I'm just estimating there, and of course, it'll depend on exactly where you install it. Now, Vont might offer other options, but they sent me a cool white fixture. Cool white meaning the color temperature. In other words, it looks way bluer than an incandescent light bulb. In fact, if you look on most any light bulb packaging, on the back it gives a color temperature guide. And for example, this is a halogen bulb, and it falls around the 3000 K mark, which is pretty warm light. Although I didn't measure it, I'm guessing that the Vont LED motion sensing light falls more around like the 5000 to 5500 K end of the spectrum, and that is a very cold light. So if you're using it alongside garden lights that let's say have incandescent or halogen bulbs or even warm white LEDs, it's going to look out of place. In fact, you probably noticed that my garage lights looked very yellow in that shot and the motion sensing light looked fairly white or even a little bluish. And the lights in my garage are fluorescent, so they're actually kind of cool as it is. And this light's even colder than that. It kind of has a moonlight sort of look to it, which is nice enough in the backyard where I put it, especially uh, since there's no other lights around usually. But like I said, if you're integrating it with another lighting scheme, you might want to go for a warmer option, depending on what lights you have right now. Overall, it's a good light. It does what it promises for a reasonable price. So, so far I'm on board. The only thing that will really tell whether this is a good light or not is if it stands the test of time. I live in New York, so we have pretty cold winters and pretty hot summers. If it survives both, then I will definitely give it my full thumbs up. For now, I'll give it a good review, but pending uh, its longevity. Well, thanks for watching my review of the Vont motion sensing light, also called the Divine LEDs motion sensing light. Uh, you probably saw the caption in the beginning, but I just want to note again, 
that they're rebranding to Vant from Divine LEDs, not the other way around. It's the same company. They're actually based in New York, which I didn't know, and that's pretty cool because, like I said, that's where I am. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them below on YouTube or on my blog at s.co.tt. If you want to see more videos vaguely like this, uh, consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you liked it. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. I don't care. I don't make money off this shit. So even if the video is terrible, whatever. Anyway, have a good night. What the shit was that noise?